What is going on, everybody? All right, hang on. We're pulling up the Kansas City Chiefs draft picks right now. So... Okay, we're going over the 20, the uh, Kansas City 2024 NFL draft picks. I'm going to be reading off to you guys uh, the draft picks, and then I'm going to be doing the Chiefs, Raiders, Chargers. Chiefs, Raiders, Chargers, and Broncos. Chiefs, Raiders, Chargers, and Broncos to wrap up the AFC. And then next week, we're moving on to the NFC. Don't forget, guys, tonight, since it's currently 104 in the morning, um, tonight we will be doing episode um, six of the NFL Boy podcast. So I hope to see you guys there. Uh, but anyways, let's hop into it. Kansas City Chiefs is up first, the reigning defending champs. Um, so, with the tw their 2024 draft class look like this, again, we're only going to read three picks because we do one, two, and three rounds. So, with the first uh, pick, in the not the first pick, but in the first round, 28th pick overall, they took wide receiver Xavier Worthy out of Texas. I got to say, man, Patrick Mahomes did not need any more help. But it's Xavier and Worthy is exactly what they were looking for because he gives me a lot of Tyreek vibes. Now, not saying he's going to be a Tyreek Hill by any means because who knows, you know, it's going to take time to know, you know, to tell that or whatever. But what I mean by that is, is he is really quick. Like, he is really quick. You're going to have to play two people on him. Otherwise, he's going to blow right past your defender. And he also is really quick on his feet like Terry Kill is. Like, if Terry Kill has a little cut up and then five-yard little juke move to get through you, he can cut up five yards, juke you this way, and make you break your ankles, and he can cut it that way and, and catch the ball. And that's exactly how Xavier Worthy is. He can make those really quick uh, moves on the feet. So I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't want to call him a Tyree kill right now because who knows what we're going to get out of it. But he definitely looks like he could be a Tyree kill for the Kansas City Chiefs, and that really scares me because – that's the last thing a Patrick Mahomes needs. Um, so anyways, with the second round pick, 63 overall, they took tackle Kingsley Sematoan. Sematoan? I have no idea how to put it pronounce his name. He's a tackle out of BYU. I cannot lie. I have not watched too much tape on him. Um... And I really didn't think the Chiefs had that bad of an offensive line last year. So I'm kind of I'm kind of shocked about this pick, to be honest with you. Um, but anyways, on to round four. They didn't have a round three pick. So on to round four, they took the uh, tight end, Jared Wait, uh, Wait, Wiley or Whaley out of TCU. I can't lie. Once again, I didn't watch too much tape on this guy. Um, I'm going to have to go do more tape, but I did not watch too much tape on this guy. Um, but overall, it's really weird to see that their first three pits in the draft were all um, taken on the offensive side of the ball. Los Angeles Chargers. 2024 draft picks. All right, so the Chargers. With their first pick, fifth overall, they took Joe Olt, tackle out of Notre Dame. And I felt like this was a great pick by the Los Angeles Chargers. Um, because, um, yeah, Joe... Justin Herbert, 
um, is capable of getting you to the playoffs. It's just whenever he gets to the playoffs, he kind of like starts to choke and stuff. And last year, it wasn't even him choking. It was more of him not having time to throw the ball at all. Like every time he hiked the ball, I felt like pressure was immediately there in his face. So that's a great pick to take the best tackle by far out of the class. So that was a nice job by John Harbaugh there. Uh, and the second, uh, or Jim Harbaugh, excuse me, and the second round 34th pick overall, they took wide receiver Land McKee. Land, Land McKee. I don't know how the fuck to pronounce his name. He's a wide receiver out of Georgia. I'm pretty sure I know who that is. I think it's the white, the small white dude. Um, I don't think he's going to be a one or a two in the NFL. I think his ball is going to transition to a slot wide receiver. But he is going to be a outstanding slot wide receiver for the Los Angeles uh, Chargers. He, he was really, really good for the uh, Georgia Bulldogs. So, yeah, I'm really interested in seeing what he's going to be able to do for Jim Harbaugh in the Los Angeles Chargers. In round three, 69th overall, they took linebacker jo uh, Junior Ca Cawson, Ca Cawson or Carson or something. No, it's Cawson. Uh, Junior Colson out of Michigan. So in the third round, Jim Harbaugh says, give me one of my own guys and goes out and gets a linebacker. Now I'm interested in knowing this season. And, and if, you know, if I have to take a guess, I'm going to say yes, but I'm really interested in seeing if that linebacker is going to start for the Los Angeles Chargers. And like I said, if I had to say, I would say yes. Din Denver Broncos Broncos twenty twenty four draft picks. <clears throat> Okay, so with the first round pick, uh, 12th overall, they took wide receiver Bo Nix out of Oregon. I feel like this was a massive pickup for the Denver Broncos because they needed a quarterback. They stayed put at where they were, and they were not tempted at all to jump in front. And they were like, okay, hang on. We're not going to move forward here. Someone's bound to fall to us, and it so happened to be Bo Nix, a.k.a. my dad's favorite quarterback out of this year's draft. Uh, dad really liked Bo Nix, um, and now he's playing with Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos. I'm almost willing to say that Bo Nix is definitely going to be um, starting, but I guess we'll wait and see. Um yeah, you know, I'm hoping Bo Nitz can transition into that franchise quarterback for the Denver Broncos because I feel like since uh, John Elway, they have not had a stable quarterback by any means. Um, so in the third round, pick number 76 overall, they took outside linebacker Jonathan Ellis. Jonathan Ellis out of Utah. <clears throat> um, I I don't know too much about this guy, to be honest. So I'm not going to give my opinion about him. I have not seen any tape on him. Um, I would have to watch tape on him. Now, here's a dude that I did watch tape on. And that's their fourth round pick, number 102 overall. And that would be... Troy Franklin out of Oregon. I only started watching tape on Troy Flan Troy Franklin because um, I've seen a lot of reports that that's who New England could take later on in the draft. 
Um, and I was like, hold up, who the hell is Troy Franklin? I went and watched him, and he's very fast. He's not really explosive in his cuts, but he is very quick, and he can blow by almost any defender running straight up the field. Um, so you're going to have to double team him with that safety back there. Um, but it makes a lot of sense that they took Troy Franklin there because they took Bo Nix um, in the first round, 12th overall. And now you got one of his teammates there alongside him. So, yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. Moving on here. So we did the Kansas City Chiefs, Los Angeles Chargers, Denver Broncos. Now we need to do the Las Vegas. Raiders, uh, twenty twenty four draft picks. What the hell? All right, here we go. All right, I found him. So in the first round, number 13th overall, they took Brock Bowser, Bowers, uh, tight end out of Georgia. I feel like this is a outstanding pick. Brock Bowers was so dominant with Georgia, man. He absolutely destroyed everybody. Now, my only concern is, is who is going to be Brock Bowers' quarterback? Will it be Aiden, uh, Aiden McCollin or will it be, um, will it be Gardner Minshew? And I think it should be Gardner Minshew. I think the mustache is good enough. Um, it, it, you know, I think he's good enough to give to get it to a team to the playoffs. Anyways, I think he's good enough to get a team to the playoffs. And Brock Bowers is a beast. Um, this is the first time they've had a really, really outstanding tight end um, since lit, since letting a man by the name of. Um, Fuck, I never forgot his name. God dang it. Um, anyways, the um, quarterback. Um, okay. It says Brock Bowers is set in Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez mode. That is going to be beast. That is going to be beast. All right. In the second round, number 44th overall, they took Jackson Powell Johnston, a cornerback slash guard out of Oregon. I got to be honest with you, man. I thought Jackson Powell Johnston was going to be taken out of this draft somewhere in the bottom of the first round. So for them to get him in the second round was an absolute steal. I got to be honest. I love round one and two picks by the Las Vegas Raiders so far. Outstanding Jackson Bow Johnston is a beast. He is a big, big boy. Yeah, he's six foot tall, 300, or six foot three inches tall. And he weighs 328 pounds. He's a monster. It takes multiple men to get him down. And I would not be surprised if he is their starting guard or starting center this coming season. In round three, they took Damar... Galmar Glaze, uh, offensive tackle out of more out of Maryland. So they in the second and third round, they're like, okay, whoever is our quarterback, we need to build up um, offensive lineman help for them. So yeah, that's exactly what they did, and you gotta love to see it. 
Anyways, guys, that is the AFC, I mean, a, not AFCs, AFC West uh, draft picks. And I will see you guys later on tonight at 8 p.m. for the podcast episode six. We're going to be taking a look at free agents and all that kinds of stuff. We're going to be taking a look into a little bit of the schedule and we're going to be doing our own i'm going to see if my dad wants to join me maybe tonight but we're going to be doing our own little trying to predict week one games so we'll see how that goes uh we'll see how many we can get right but yeah that's all tonight on the podcast right here on this channel 8 p.m eastern i'll see you guys tonight i'm out peace